Hey everyone, welcome to part two of how to create a PDF with Python. In this video, we're going to go over how to create a PDF like this. We're gonna add a header with a title and a logo or image. We will also go over how to add automatic page breaks. What that does is once the text reaches the end of the page, it will automatically create a new page for the text to go on rather than just ending at the bottom of the page. And we'll learn how to create footers with the page numbers. Notice there's a little error here. I'll talk about that in the video. All right, to get started, I have my folder here with the image that I want and my Python script. I'm going to open this with Adam. In this .py file, I've included the same code from our last video, just to give us a head start. As a reminder, this is what our PDF looked like. Kind of ugly, but we're gonna work on it throughout this series. So let's get rid of that ugly gross red color. So we don't need the dot set text color method anymore. We'll delete that. We'll also get rid of this hello world cell. And let's change this output to PDF underscore two dot PDF. So what I wanna do is have many lines of text on our PDF. And to make that easy on us, I'm gonna use a for loop. So right under the set font method, I'm going to add the for loop. For i in range, we'll say one through 41. That way we'll have 40 lines of text and we'll actually just use this goodbye world, except we're going to change the arguments. So here we're going to set a width of zero, which actually doesn't mean a width of zero. It means that the width will be the entire width of the PDF. We'll have a height of 10 and we'll include an F string We'll say, this is line, and then in curly braces, we'll pass in our line number, or I, and we'll include a nice big smiley face. Let's save our script and run it. So now we have PDF underscore two. I'm going to open this with a web browser just to make it easier to go back and forth and edit. So here's our PDF. It doesn't look exactly like we expected, each cell is on this single row. Line one is here, line two, and then we can't see all the other 38 lines because they're off the page. So what we want to remember is to add the argument ln equals one, or we can say true. And what this does is move the cursor to the next line after the text is printed. So let's save that, run our script, and we will refresh there we go. So we have our lines printed on each line below one another. Sometimes what will happen to us is once our text fills up the current page, the PDF will not automatically add the text to the next page. If that happens to you, what you can do is add the set auto page break method. We're going to do that just above the add page method here. So to call that method, we'll say set auto underscore page underscore break and include the argument auto equals true. We can also set the margin here. We'll set it to 15. What the margin is, is how far from the bottom of the page, the page break is gonna be added. I'll show you an example of that in just a second here. Let's save our script, run our file, pull up our PDF, refresh our page. If you didn't already have the page break, it should be there now. And we also see that the page break started 15 millimeters from the bottom. So just to demonstrate, let's change this margin to 100 and see what happens. Let's refresh. And now we see that the page break is 100 millimeters starting from the bottom. All right, let's put that back to 15. Now let's add a header and a footer to our PDF. FPDF actually has header and footer methods included and they're automatically called, except for they're empty and don't do anything. So if we want to use the header and footer methods, we need to extend the class and override them. So we're starting to get into object-oriented programming. If you're unfamiliar with this, that's okay. I would recommend trying to brush up a little bit on this. It's an important skill to have. However, for this tutorial, I think you'll be fine if you just follow along and kind of get the gist of how to modify headers and footers. To accomplish this, we'll move to the top of our script and we'll inherit from the FPDF class. Now what we'll wanna do is extend the header method. We'll pass in self. 
We're going to add a logo. That's going to be the image that's in our folder. So we'll say self.image foxface.png. So that is the name of the image that we had right here. We're going to set the X and Y coordinates. So I've already played around with this a little bit. So an X of 10 and a Y of eight works pretty well. And then we can set the width and the height. If we just set the width, let's say a width of 25, then what's gonna happen is our image will be included with a proportional height. This is handy as we don't have to do any math to make sure our image doesn't get distorted or stretched. Let's set the font of our header. So we'll say self.set font Helvetica. Let's set our font to be bold because it's in the header. And we'll set the text size to be a little larger than what we have in the body. So somewhere around 20. To add a title, we can just add a cell, self.cell. We'll set the cell width of zero, height of 10. We'll include the title as title. And for now, we're not gonna include a border. So we'll set that to false. The default is actually set to false. So if you don't want a border, you don't have to add this argument, but we're going to change this shortly. So we'll keep the argument. And we do want our cursor to move to the next line after this cell is printed. And then to align our text, we can set align to equal capital C, which will align our text in the center of the cell. And we're gonna add another line break just to give some space in between the header and where the text in the body of the PDF starts. And now what we need to do, instead of creating an object from the FPDF class, we will use our new PDF class with the header method that we just extended from the FPDF class. We will save our script and run it and refresh our PDF. Now we see our title and our little fox face there with all of our text. And we also see that the header is included on every page. In the example PDF, we had a little box around the title here. If we were to do that with our current method, what we would get is a box all the way along the width of this PDF. So I'll show you that real quick. Border is equal to true. So if you notice, I'm using ones and zeros, trues and false. This is just to emphasize that you can use whichever one you prefer. Hopefully it's not confusing with me switching them up. One means true, zero means false, and vice versa. When you're working on your own project, just make sure to be consistent. We'll save our script, run it, refresh our page, and we see that the border is all along the width of the PDF. Because we have our image on the left here, this isn't really what we wanted. We wanted a border just around the text of the title. We can hack it a little bit. So what we can do is add a new cell for padding. So self.cell, and this is where it's a little hacky. We have to play around with it a little bit. A width of about 80 works pretty good. And then what we're gonna wanna do is change this to a width of about 30. You will also have to play around with this cell width a little bit as well. So now let's save our file and run it refresh our PDF, and there we go. We get a border around the text that is in the middle of the PDF. All right, exciting stuff. To add the footer, it's not much different. We'll come back within our PDF class again and add the footer. We'll do this by extending the footer method from the FPDF class. Remember to pass in self. So here we're going to set the position of the footer. We can do that by self.set y, and then pass in the position that we want our footer to start. So here I'm using a negative 15 because I want the footer to start 15 millimeters from the bottom. If I passed in a positive 15, it'd be 15 millimeters from the top. Here we're going to set font, self.set font. We'll use Helvetica again. We're going to have it in italics and we're going to have the font a little bit smaller because it's in the footer. So we'll say a font of 10. And we can include the page number in the footer, which is kind of nice. So to do that, we'll add a cell, have a width of zero, height of 10, and we'll use an F string here to add the page number to the footer. We'll say page 
in curly braces, self.page underscore no. Then we'll include a forward slash. And then in curly braces, we will use another set of curly braces, nb. Then what we're gonna want to do is align our text in the center using a capital C. So in our example at the beginning of this video, we saw that this NB was not working correctly. What it's supposed to do is get the total number of pages of the PDF document and return it here. However, there's a little bit of a bug right now. The reason why I'm including it is because I just read on GitHub that there was a fix to this problem that was made. So in the next update to FPDF2, this should be working fine. So I wanted to include it because when you're watching this, that update may have already come out and we could be good to go. And then to use this NB, we need to include one thing down here just after we create our PDF object to get the total page numbers. We'll say pdf.alias underscore nb underscore pages. Save our script, run it, open our PDF, refresh, and now we can see at the bottom of our page is the page number by what is supposed to be the total number of pages. And we see that the page number is added to every page. I'll include a link to the image in the description below so that, that you can use the same one if you want. I look forward to seeing you in part three of this how to create a PDF with Python series. And thanks for watching.